The positive praise for the top rookies continued in Week 7, as Max Bretos and Christopher Sullivan of FSC called the 2-1 DC victory over Dallas. Going back to Steve's point about the rookies, I mentioned Stephen Fry for Toronto, the number one pick, Steve zakawani has been pretty handy yes. for Seattle as well. So this is looking to be a bumper rookie crop to the benefit of many MLS clubs. I think it has a lot to do with the confidence from the coach to play the players into becoming good pros. Sorry, my memory kicks in late, but I forgot about Omar Gonzalez as well, A.J. De La Garza for the Galaxy, plenty of players. TFC goalkeeper Stephen Fry would also receive accolades from Toronto FC fans as they voted him Esquire Player of the Month. Our fans have voted, and they've decided that the April Esquire Player of the Month is goalkeeper number 24, Stephen Fry. But in the game that followed, Fry would have his modest 240-minute shutout streak snapped by Columbus's Emmanuel Ekpo. However, rookie teammate Sam Cronin would save the day with a beautiful cross to the head of Chad Barrett, earning the Reds a point. There may be possibilities here all the way across to Barrett! And just as we say it, Toronto FC are back on terms. And that's got the crowd going. Barrett second of the season. It's 1-1 at Bevo Field. For Gene Alexander, Week 7 meant the chance to prove himself to his coaches with a 25-minute appearance off the bench in a U.S. Open Cup game in Seattle. After Steve Zaquani's team defeated RSL in that game, he turned his sights to traveling to Chicago to play the Fire. I think road games are different to home games in a lot of ways, you know, you're not with your fans. Um, the other team probably comes with a lot of energy because they're playing in front of their fans. But at the same time, I think our style is to attack well and defend well, you know. We defend very well from the front and I think it's our mentality, our energy that's going to get us um, important road points, you know. So we're not going to go there with a change of mentality, we're just going to go there, you know, kind of, not even a little bit more cautious, just kind of trying to do what we've been doing at home. And it's been working so far. It worked in Toronto. And so I think this weekend is no different. We go there, we try to get the win, and we just play the way we've been playing. Unfortunately, with a Freddie Montero red card in the 48th minute, Seattle had to change tactics, and Zaquani was taken off in the 55th. Soon after, Chicago took the lead. Comes around, left foot, back to Papa. Papa sends it on, and in! The Chicago Fire have gotten on the board. Fortunately for Zaquani and company, they were able to earn a result with a late Tyrone Marshall goal. Ball comes down and gets put in. Tyrone Marshall has even the score here. Tied it up at one. Heading into LA's game against New York, AJ De La Garza found himself in a continued battle to get back into the first team. It's more of a tactical move this week. Um, obviously, this is our sixth game into the season without a win. Uh, we're at home uh, from two games away, and uh, we needed a win, so. Uh, I mean, basically the coach just wanted um, more of attacking players on the bench. That way, I mean, we can come down from a goal. I think this is a good chance for AJ just to, you know, work on his stuff and uh, get better. Omar and his defensive teammates were able to shut out the Red Bulls. And thanks to a penalty kick goal from Landon Donovan, LA won for the first time in 2009. I've been winning for six, six games, so um, I'm just hoping we can get one more win. I mean, it was weird, obviously. Um, not even dressing, uh, watching your team out there playing, fighting, working hard. And uh, but I mean, the most important thing is we got the win. And uh, I mean, it's, I'm not going to complain if I'm in the stands and we're winning. The big story in Week Eight was a matchup between the two top teams in the East, as Toronto traveled to take on DC United. Chris Pontius had to watch the first part of this game from the bench. The coaches are trying to manage minutes for everyone. You know, it's, it's going to be a long, tough summer. Um, you know, with all the the U.S. Open Cup, you know, Concacaf coming up. And, and just league games in general. Um, so the coaches are trying to manage minutes. Uh, you know, if you're not starting, you know, if you're coming off the bench as a sub, you want to have an impact. You know, and, and that's the only thing that you can do. You know, the, they're going to put out the lineup every game, and, and you know, whether you're in it or whether you're not, you know, you, you want to have an impact somehow. Fry and Cronin both started for Toronto, and for Cronin, it was a special occasion as his family watched from the stands. Yeah, I had a big, I had a big crew, crew of family and friends here today. It's, this is the closest MLS city to my hometown, so. Um, and along with that, I have a lot of friends that move up here and work in D.C. area after college, so. I know quite a few people here, and it was just good having the support, and uh, it'll be nice to see them after the match. In what proved to be a very offensive game, even the keeper got involved in the attack, as Fry recorded his first MLS assist. 
Chris Pontius was brought on in the 74th minute with his team trailing to one. He didn't wait long to make an impact. Oh, it, I mean, it, it was a great feeling, you know. Um, Jaime made, you know, an unbelievable dummy for that. And, uh, you know, I found myself, you know, 15 yards out, 12 yards out. Um, and there's a lot of people in front of the box, and so I knew the goalie wouldn't be able to see it, and I was just trying to put it on frame, and they went in. The match ended in dramatic fashion, with the Pontius goal being the fourth of six, as the two teams ended the game tied at three. Di Rosario with a shot! Di Rosario! Arms is on Neymar. Box. Penalty. Kneeling for a penalty, and they've got it. Next time on Rookie Life, Tied to Mediocrity.